In this demonstration, we're going to design the spring bracket that's shown in the image in the right hand side. First thing we need to do is to decide the material we're going to use. This can be done through the material selection table. And here you can select by a number of different parameters. But in this case, we're going to select the physical material first to give us our spring steel. And then we're going to select the thickness. And that narrows our choice down to the material that we need to use. Once selected, as we go through, what I'm trying to create at each stage is shown in the image in the right hand corner. So we're going to start off with a base feature, which is driven from this sketch. And we're using the contour flange command here. And you can see where there's sharp corners in the cut in the sketch. Then bends will be introduced at those points and where there's curves, then the feature will just follow. And what we're doing here is we're designing half of the bracket, which we're going to mirror later. So now we've got our base feature. We're going to cut out a portion across the bottom using the normal cutout command. And we use normal cutout rather than extrude to make sure that the edges are cut perpendicular to the faces such that we get a, a valid flat pattern at the end of the uh, end of the process. Now the normal cutout is complete. We're going to add some hem features to round off the ends of the bracket here. And we're going to use the closed loop type. And here just set up the parameters of bend radius and flange length. This is a fairly small part. So all of my defaults are, are large in comparison. And if you're typically going to design this kind of size part, then adjust all of your customer defaults accordingly. So we just select the edge and the hem feature is created and just hit apply in each of case of each case where we want to generate that feature. Now we're going to tear out or rip out a, a segment of the material to create a little spring lever feature. Just going to expose or show the sketch that we're going to use here and then run the rip command. Now the rip command can be used to tear corners of boxes, but in this case, we're going to use a curve to just generate a slot within the part here. Now if I use minimal relief, I'll get a very small gap here, but I'm going to turn that option off and generate a rip width more, more according to what I want here. And this is 0.2 millimeters. I can preview it and it looks okay. So we're just going to okay that. And you can see I've got a rounded end to this as well. Now I've ripped the material out here. I can expose the sketch, select the sketch and generate the bend. And again, enter the relevant parameters. In this case, I want a 35 degree. And I'm going to change the default bend radius. And give something much larger just to give me a gradual bend to my spring feature here. So that's that complete. We now move on to strengthening the bends. Now here we're going to add a bead feature around this top curve. Now to do that, we first need to operate this in the flat and expose the sketch that's going to generate the position for the bead feature. Let me just turn on both sketches because there's a second one to do in just a minute. Now I've got a sketch here and I can run the bead command, select the sketch and again make the parameters appropriate. At the moment the, the features are just too large to even show the preview. There we go. Now we've got a depth and a radius more in line with what we're after. And in this case the settings I'm going to reduce the die radius down for the punch feature as well and we've got our bead feature in the flat now we just re-bend the flattened bend here and you can see that we have our bead feature running around that top edge giving us that extra strength there let's generate the bead feature across the bottom now no unbending to do here we're just going to wash the feature out through the bend and again Dialog memories remembered all of my settings from the previous feature, saving me typing those numbers in. Now let's clean up the screen, turn off some of those sketches to hide them, and move on to the next feature. 
Here we're going to generate a flange across that bottom edge. Select the flange command, pick the edge, and enter the appropriate parameters. What you can see here is the parameters as they stand now are stopping the flange short because it interacts with the bead feature. But as you can see as I adjust and change the parameters according to what I'm after here and move that flange away from the bead feature, it generates the required profile. Define the length reference and the inset that I'm after here and we can OK that and the flange is complete. Now I just want some tapered edges on this flange so we'll use the bend taper command. Here we pick the stationary face and the bend face. I'm going to make it symmetric on both sides and a simple case of putting in the taper angle for the bend area, turning on the web or the face and have a 30 degree to match and we now have our bend taper uh, for the flange feature. Okay, so we've finished half the design now. Let's double things up. Let's mirror that design across. Now what's important to note within sheet metal here, if we do a mirror body, we need to make sure within the settings that we fix it at timestamp. This will enable the, the Unite feature that comes later to actually operate on that body successfully. So we've done our mirror and now we do our Unite and we've got our finished part. Now sometimes within sheet metal the modeling commands such as mirror, unite and so forth can cause issues and if the flat pattern does fail after this operation it's just a simple case of cleaning up the model and the way we do that is we run the convert to sheet metal command just pick a face and OK and it ripples through and cleans up the model. Now when I generate the flat pattern it's uh, generated successfully and we can go take a look at that flat pattern feature in the model view and there's our finished flat pattern for this part. So that's the generation of this uh, little simple demo. You can see very few features to create what is a very complex part that can be done relatively easy, especially with symmetric parts here. But let's not stop there. Let's move on just a little bit further and let's generate a rendered image using the built-in capability of NX. We're going to go into Advanced Studio. We're going to assign an appropriate material texture to the part and then run the ray trace image and generate the, the rendered output for that design. Hope you enjoy this little demonstration and um, look forward to doing some more for you later.